the album, of course, is called uh, Confessions on a Dance Floor. Mm -hmm. And you've, you've gone back to your roots and just made a completely, you know, four to the floor, unapologetic disco album. Yep. Why now? Because I'm in the mood to dance. That's really the plain and simple. And there are no gaps in this record. No gaps. It goes song to song to song to song. No ballads. Put on your dancing shoes. So do you get to go clubbing much these days? I have been lately because I've been going to clubs to promote my record. So I got to go dancing at the Roxy. Um, I actually had my daughter's birthday party at the Roxy as well. When it, you know, it's a roller skating rink. So that was fun. We played disco music for the entire party. And uh, I DJ'd one night in, a, in another club in New York. Cool, so, so you can probably, have you always been able to do that? Or is that quite a recent? Um, I used to do it back in the day because I used to go out with DJs. My first boyfriend in New York was a DJ. He used to teach me some of his tricks and I would go into the DJ booth and like do stuff. Could, like um, the crab scratch, bit of yeah. crossfader action. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And uh, speaking of, of your daughter, we hear that Lourdes is going to be uh, ballet dancing in the Nutcracker yep. in London soon. So obviously she's inherited your, your funky dance moves. Well, your I'm not sure how funky she'll be dancing, but... Well, probably not in the Nutcracker. She's no. a good dancer. Um, she's actually a way better ballet dancer than I was. Right. Um, but uh, I'm very excited about it, and I know she is. And I heard that you disco dance with both the kids for an hour before bedtime every night. Not every night. If I get... I've got to get, like, for instance, tonight. You, know, you might miss them, yeah. Right. Yeah, but that is something I love to do. They both love to dance, and it's a good way to tire them out. Exactly, I was going to say, that's a, what a brilliant idea. We play disco tag. How do you play disco tag? We put on a disco song, and then there's this thing, this robot that's in the middle of the floor. You, you have to hold on to the, the, the robot, yeah. uh, or you get tagged. Uh, when the music turns off, I mean, it's... For, it's long and complicated. It's complicated. It involves music and it involves dancing. And a robot. And I just robot. like the idea that you said there's a robot in the room. Right, so a yes. game anyone can play then. Yeah. Then, so, yeah. <laughs> now, last time we spoke to you on CD UK, the kids were listening to the Sugar Babes. Has that changed now? Are they um, well, same? Lola's really into um, Rachel Stevens, Beyonce. She likes Gwen Stefani. I think that's her favourite stuff, and my son listens uh, to Usher. Yeah, it's yeah. his favourite. Smooth. He's going to yeah, be smooth. He's, yeah, he's a smooth operator, my son. And what about you? What are you listening to now? Gold Frat. I love their new record. Well, a lot of people are saying, it, you it's know, cool. that, it, that it's very much Alison's a, a lot like you. you. Really? Yeah, kind of. I think a lot oh, of people I think are so saying. At all. It's good. It, well, it's good. It's in, different. It's good. Uh, so the single hung up samples, gimme, 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 mm. my album. Have you always been an ABBA fan? Yep, always. And, and in fact, I had to work hard. I had to do backbends to get them to let me use the sample. Really? Who admit. was it? Was it was it beyond being tricky? Well, there's a, a tricky one and a non-tricky one. Right, OK. And I'm not sure which one it is, to tell you the truth. That's fair. I think everybody has that with ABBA. Um, now, I'm told, I don't know if this is true either, that you're right into the Mamma Mia stage show. Is that true? Is that, what? The Mamma Mia stage show, ABBA the musical. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it either. No, I haven't seen. They said in the papers you've been to see it hundreds of times. Liars, right? <laughs> They're on the list. I, I'd like. Is it good? I'd like to see it. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, okay. I was going to ask you. I, was, I still want to see. I want to say. I want to go see Billy Elliot. Is that, yeah. Is that good? A young northern boy doing ballet warms my heart. Being <laughs> from the northeast. <laughs> I introduced myself to Ricky Gervais at Live 8 and he asked me who I was. He was just being cheeky though. No, I don't think he's ever yeah, heard of me. No, he's, he's so into himself, he's never heard of me. <laughs> You're somebody that everybody knows. You're kind of, there's probably... That, that's a song title. Well, you can have it, it's yours. Okay. Is it an actual song title yet? No, you're know? somebody that everybody knows. Well, Write that down. Take it, it's yours, it's Thank yours. Thank you, Madonna. thank you. Um, and you're kind of like a part of the fabric of everybody's life. Do you ever miss being able to introduce yourself to people? Well, every once in a while it happens. Really? Well, yeah, well, I introduced myself to Ricky Gervais at Live 8 and he asked me who I was. He was just being cheeky though. No, I don't think he's ever yeah, heard of me. No, he's, he's so into himself, he's never heard of me. <laughs> you know what, I can't remember exactly, but every once in a while I'll be somewhere and someone Generally, it's an older person. It will say, "What's your name, honey?" 
That's very sweet. That must be quite nice. It I must love be quite it. a nice change. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. So on the subject of Bricky, are you going to be in the new series of extras? We've got our fingers crossed. I li I'd like to be. Who, would like you like to play yourself He's going to have to be nicer to me the next time he sees me there. Bricky. He's um, been warned. Mm -hmm. Consider yourself warned, Gervais. And also on the subject of being recognised, where are people best at pretending not to recognise you out of politeness? Well, that would be just about everywhere. Um, not Oxford Street. Do, do they just shout then? Well, no, at Oxford Street they do this. They walk past you and then they turn around. I call them U-turns. And they go this way, and then right when they're like 20 feet away from you, they turn around and come at you again. I don't know. I mean, when I go to pubs, everybody leaves me alone. Yeah. That's probably why I like going there. Finally, is it true that you turned down £82 million to star in your own Las Vegas show? And if so, was it the Siegfried and Roy situation that put you off? You know, what happened to Roy? Well, I don't work with animals, so... You wouldn't bring in a panther for Vegas. No, no, no. So I wouldn't. I wouldn't. That wouldn't put me off of it. I think I just don't like the idea of being stuck in one city for so many months. That mm. would be the a challenge I couldn't uh, put myself up for. So it wasn't the so. 82 million that you poo pooed. It was just no, being stuck in the desert. It wasn't the money that freaked me out. It wasn't the animals. Yeah, it was the sand. <laughs> well, and I think that's a, that's as good a way to end it. Zenny. thank you very much for, You're welcome. for joining us.